It was great being back in Japan. It was a rush though. It was a little bit too quick. And I wish we'd had a bit more time. And also it was hot and very humid and particularly Osaka, it rained. And doing guitar solos in the rain, you know, you can be a hero, but it's not that much fun. So uh, I would love to see some video of that <laughs> because it makes it something completely different. You know, you, you're soaking wet and your fingers get all soft and it's, it's a complete, it's like an endurance test. You know, you have to kind of keep in your mind that you're entertaining people and that they are still there. Having said all that, it was great because the response was great and it was fun. Uh, yeah, I could have just done with a little bit more time to look around, you know, because Japan's a wonderful place and one of the places that we really grew up in Japan, so it, it would have been nice. You know, we have to go back. <laughs> ah, always Japanese food, yeah, but as I say, it was a, it was a rush. We didn't have that much time. Uh, a little bit in Tokyo. Um, yeah, it was... It was um, Interesting. I mean, also, I'm not 25 anymore. You know, in, in the old days, I would do all night, you know, we'd go out and drink and eat or whatever. And then I would get up in the morning and do towers and gardens and whatever, you know. Now I have to concentrate on keeping the energy and keeping healthy. Um, but I did go up the, um, the new tower, which is called, is it the, the Sky Tree? Which was very cool. I like, see, I like towers because you get a perspective on the world. And uh, Japan and Tokyo is just such an incredible city, you know, always, always building, building, building. It's quite awesome. So I enjoy that. It gives me a little feeling of perspective and I like the food. I had some really nice traditional Japanese food. I'm vegetarian, so I like to have the old Buddhist food, which is really nice. So yeah, it's a good time. Too quick, too quick. <laughs> Well, there's two things, I guess. The record was a compilation anyway, and we've been working on trying to choose the songs for actually quite a long time. It's quite difficult because we start off with the idea of love songs, but also they need to be lesser known love songs, but also very accessible songs. So we had a lot of argument and discussion. So here you have an album of compilation, which is not greatest hits. Add to that the fact that we found these three new tracks. We found actually four, but only three of them survived the selection process for now. And um, we also have various mixes which people haven't heard. But there is one version of each of three songs which are all new on there. And new in different ways. I can tell you about this <laughs> if you want. Um, the first thing we found was um, a song called Let Me In Your Heart Again. And to be honest, it, like a lot of things that are hidden, it wasn't really hidden. It was actually staring us in the face. It was on the, the side of Let Me In Your Heart Again was supposedly a lost song, but actually it was very much there in front of our face. We just didn't see it. It was marked on the box, Let Me In Your Heart Again, take one, two, three, four, five. And none of the takes we thought were right. And we kept changing the key because it was a difficult song to sing with the range. It's one of these things where Freddie says, Brian, you always give me impossible things to sing. And so we were changing it around and we thought that we didn't have it. We thought, okay, we didn't do this. We have to come back to this another day. So it was put on a shelf. Now, what I discovered when we got everything out was in fact, between the takes, we did have enough. And it's actually the four of us playing together and singing together, which is great. It's, it's quite precious to hear that coming back. We could feel it's not something pieced together in Pro Tools in the sense of, you know, here's the drums, here's the guitar. It was actually played together and it feels good. There's no clicks, of course, you know, we just play instinctively. But what I was able to do in, in Pro Tools was chop bits up and find, make sure the middle eight actually worked as a concept. A little miracle happened actually, because we had two different versions of the middle eight and for some reason in my head, I suddenly realized that they could link together. But having done that, you have a track where we're playing and I had to do very, very little actually to make it into a finished track. A little bit of extra backing vocals, a little bit of extra guitar in the middle, but mostly it's as it was played, 1984 or whatever it was. Uh, so I got very excited and because here we have a track which we thought was lost, but it's found. So that was a song that you wrote? Let Me In Your Heart Again, I wrote at the time, yeah. And was that recorded at the same time as Radio Gaga and Break Free? I think so. It's that period in Los Angeles, right where we are today, yeah. In the record plant, in the old record plant. So why did such a beautiful song, you know, get kind of shelved? And what's the message behind the song, too? Uh, 
Well, you know, if you don't think it's happened, you have to shelve it. You know, you, sometimes you get to a point where you think, okay, we can't do this anymore. We're banging our heads against the wall. Let's try something different. And then you think you're going to come back to it, but life gets busy and you never do. What's the message of the song? It's a song about lost love and maybe trying to find it again. <laughs> and the song that a lot of people are talking about is There Must Be More to Life Than This. Mm -hmm. And uh, could you talk about, so how did this song come into being? There Must Be More to Life Than This started off as a song that Freddie brought in to be a Queen song. So we played it and we have backing tracks. Freddie playing piano and me playing guitar, Roger playing drums, John playing bass, you know, the, the old Queen format. And then again, this is a song which never got finished. We thought, hmm, it's okay, but it's not quite finished. It needs a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. And at some point during this process, Freddie went round to see Michael Jackson. And the two of them obviously sat there and thought, oh, we'll have a go at this song, you know. And there's a couple of others that they kicked around. But this one, obviously, Michael is learning as they're rolling the tape. So it's very interesting to hear it develop. And at some points, they sing together. Uh, and there's lots of discussion. We knew it existed because there was, there was a rough mix kicking around on a cassette, very low quality. But what happened was we were able to find the original multitracks that they'd worked on. So once you've got that, you have the multitracks with Michael and Freddie, you have the multitracks from Queen here. So we were able to bring them together and make a complete uh, track, you know, a finished track. And there's various ways you can cook the pie, you know, and there are various ways. And we did it one particular way, which actually nobody's heard yet, uh, which I think is rather good. What we did was we gave it to William Orbit, who's an old friend, and he did another mix, very much sounding like the band, which I think is very nice. And that's the mix which we've managed to sort of get past all the obstacle course, and, and that's the one that people will hear right now. They were friends, yeah, and we used to see Michael quite a bit. Michael was around at some of our concerts and he liked, you know, he was very excited about Queen music and he loved Freddie, he definitely loved Freddie. He loved our light show, he liked the presentation, you know, so he was a person that we knew and Freddie and he spent some time together and I think some of it was casual, some of it was just, uh, you know, enjoying a meal or a drink and then they went into the studio to see what happened. Yeah, we knew Michael quite well. I remember spending time at airports with him because sometimes when you're on tour at the same time, you cross at certain points and you find yourself in the same airport lounge. I remember him, I remember Michael playing games with Jimmy, my son, who was, uh, I don't know how old he was at the time. He was a small child at the time. And um, yeah, he was just someone that we enjoyed having around. <laughs> 